Okay, folks, today's American contractor. I just want to make this video real quick and uh, give you an up-to-date uh, what's going on in Iraq. This is a map of Iraq, and everybody knows on the 10th of June, which was Tuesday, the ISISS, ISIS, with 800 fighters, went into Mosul early Tuesday morning and uh, fought off 30,000 Iraqi army soldiers. It was two divisions, 20 battalions. They should just drop their weapons and left. Now the ISS, they moved on south to Kirkuk, which they uh, continue on fighting there even right now. And they're continuing on moving on down to Tikrit, which they already freed a bunch of prisoners in Tikrit, about 250 in the Mosul estimates uh, as far as freed prisoners. It went from 1,000 to 3,000 prisoners. Now Samara, they did some fighting down there. Uh, they're in full control of Samara. Uh, they're in full control of Decret. And they're just trying to uh, maintain their positions. And as you can see, they're moving south. They already have a strong foothold in Ramadi and in Fallujah. For the last six months, the Iraqi army has been unable to dislodge the ISS from Fallujah and from Ramadi. So if they think they're going to take back Mosul with 1.5 uh, million, 6 million people, it's going to be a harder task, folks. And the distance from central Baghdad is going to be more a problem for as far as logistics and resupplies and things of that nature. Now, the oil deposits. just want to show you exactly where the KRG's oil deposits. It's in that area right there. And like I said, they're marching towards Baghdad. And they're about 40 kilometers from the city limits of Baghdad. So they're really close. Baiji is the largest oil refinery in Iraq. So, and they already have control of this, the ISIS. And they already looted the central bank in Mosul. Took over $400 million in cash. Iraqi dinar, equivalent to $400 million in cash, the U.S. An undetermined amount of gold. Now, PM, PM Nuri Maliki, everybody knows that he's the prime minister, has been for the last eight years, and he's not doing a very good job, but uh, I think he realizes that now, and uh, it's just a matter of days. Either he's better step up to the plate, as the United States has told him just recently, or he needs to step down. On the 10th of June, press briefing was calling for the state of high alert. And he called for an emergency session on the 12th of June, which is today. Now, the emergency session meeting with the Iraqi parliament did not go through. All the other parliament members uh, made it that decided to go, arrived, but they had some boycotts between the uh, Kurdish and the Sunni uh, MP political blocs. Now, I want you to point, some, I want to point something out. Else. It took him two days to do this emergency session. So you know, you know it's not going to go well, all right? The uh, uh, Maliki's opposition, as I said in a previous podcast, that Maliki's opposition is not willing to grant Maliki broader, broader uh, powers, emergency powers, to uh, to fight this uh, threat that the, that the government's fallen under. He's already terminated the Iraqi army general that was involved in Mosul. He's also in negotiations with the KRG to help fight the ISS. I don't know how that go negotiations are going well, but um, even in Kirkuk right now, the ISS have uh, started um, moving into Kirkuk. I don't know how much control they have in Kirkuk, but the Iraqi army that was in Kirkuk have left their positions, and now the Pesh Merga, the Pesh, have taken up those positions and hopefully will maintain those positions, protect the uh, fuel that's the fuel stocks that are there, the ammunition, all the military hardware that's there. They have a military base there. Um, hopefully that will uh, get that straightened out. Also, uh, 10th of June, curfews were in Baghdad and the surrounding areas. There was a curfew in Kirkuk. I don't know if that's been lifted. Yet. I don't know if it, any of the curfews have been lifted. So someone's going to have to say in Priam Malki, the United States is not going to send in troops. The UK is not going to send in troops. Australia is not going to send, send in troops. The Canadians are not going to send in troops. So someone is going to have to um, help uh, PM Malky fix this problem. Here's a Mail Online article. U.S. has no plans to send any of its 35,000 Middle East-based troops into Iraq. 
And we're, it's this is all about Iraq, folks. This is Iraq government's problem, and they're going to have to deal with it. But there's one person that's going to have to uh, come in and uh, take care of, try to save uh, PM Malky and his government. And it's this gentleman right here. He is Major General Qasem Salamania, Salamania, my fault, Salamani. And he is the leader of the IRGC Codes Force. It's a division of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Now, he's the same guy that went into Syria when Syria was getting ready to, Syrian government was getting ready to basically almost lose the war over there, the proxy war with the United States and the West. This guy, Major General Qasem Soleimani, went into Syria and turned things around. And it's exactly the same thing was going to do in Iraq. He cannot afford, either can the Irans, the Persians, afford Iraq to uh, go down. So this guy's already sending the special forces. Iran special forces rush in to help, you know, a floundering ally. He's already sent in some 150-man unit from the Quds Force, supported by the Sabrin, which is like a SAS-type equivalent um, shock troop, stuff like that. So he's going he's gonna to help PM Malki and the Iraqi government um, fight off the ISIS. Hope you like this, this video. Give some different perspective, different information. If you uh, have a different perspective, have any thoughts on this, you can contact me directly at ac at americancontractor.com. And I thank you for watching.